Have a go at these guys. We're somewhere interesting for you today. These are the standing stones. They predate the plane of jars and they got no idea, like the jars, what they were for. Have heard of the standing stones, but they got laying discs also. There's just as many nicely shaped round discs here laying on the ground. They're all over the place. Is what there is standing stones. They are a mystery. And unfortunately, from the locals, we just had lunch with some locals, there used to be heaps of our crops of these standing stones here. But they've gone and put a road in and they've just ploughed them all down. You see some of them strewn along the side of the road as offcasts because they didn't know what they were before they actually thought about, hang on, how long have these suckers been here? But that's not the biggest mystery to me. The biggest mystery to me is all the holes in the ground here. They're all over the place. So me with my inquisitive mind has grabbed my trusty stickometer there and I've gone over to some of these holes just to see if there is a bottom to them. Make sure they don't go all the way down to China. heading further north into Hulupan, higher up into these mountains, up to a little village called Mungbun, and hopefully get some information on where these standing stones are. here in the mountains and they're out of it. Good thing we got an extra fuel tank. these trucks just come in and take over a village. I do not remember this village being full of trucks last time we are here. I do not remember this many trucks up here. absolutely destroying these people's way of life up here living in this bloody dust and filth do these people see any 
benefits from it. Kids still there playing on the road. The state of this road. have found a servo up here on top of the mountains in these in this village had to toot the horn get out and yell the lady was in in here washing some clothes and stuff no nobody to be found but we got her attention now what is fuel worth up here okay about a dollar 90 a litre Oz, so what would that be? At a dollar 30 a litre US. Okay. Okay. Cup Jada, thank you. Okay. We've probably got about well, about 15 kilometres to go to Mong Pun, Mong Pun. But 16. there's 16. But there should be a turn off before then to the standing stone. So if we see it standing on the way. Here, here. Yeah. The okay. So oh, six to one half a dollars in the yellow. Which one we go to first? Me now we can on. Okay, we'll go we'll go to the town first then, hey? Okay. Yeah, we'll go to the town and get some lunch. Okay. I pulled into Nazareth and I was feeling about a half hour's bed. I just needed some place where I could lay my head. Oh, hey, mister, won't you tell me where a man might find a bed? It's unusual for a good sized village to not be on a main road here. We've actually got to turn off and head out towards it. And not being a main thoroughfare, main road. I haven't got the trucks digging up the road. The surface up. It's not a bad drive in here. It's only about three kilometres off the from the turn off. Muang Pen, which is Hua Muang. That is the name of it now. You will find it as Muang Pen on Google, but it's Hua Muang. One more. It's a mouthful. But very busy little town. We're going to find um, go for a mosey on through here. See if we can't find somewhere to eat. Check out their markets. Okay. A nice set up for the shoe shop here for markets isn't it very different sort of layout you got your fresh produce across the road there. there's a guest house here which is very easy to find even on the satellite map when you're looking at these little villages just look for a place with big iron roofs all joined together Nine times out of ten, that'll be the market. And you'll usually find, nine times out of ten, there's a guest house right across the road from the markets. And this looks exactly like it did if I was looking down on it, these rooftops. Okay. The baby. <laughs> the look of shock on their face. Okay. Trying to gauge whether it's uh, 
predominantly a Hmong village or not. Some low her homes here. This is out the other side of it. Give you an idea of how cold it get, does get up here. Nice heavy blankets there. That is what they lent us at the Hmong village. We would have froze our tits off if it wasn't for them helping us out with a blanket. They gave us one of them. We all roasted. They are good blankets, those ones. Oh no, restaurants over on this side. Over on the um, fresh produce side. And the mandarins are nice and sweet too, been hooking into them. Sabedi, tada, nyodo. Salpan. Salpan? Okay. Did someone with. We'll go and eat first and. Koisi gapa. We got the, the prefab dishes done up here, I think. Nice DDD. Hello, Sabidi. Okay. Fish. Oh. Zap. Tado. Sao Pan. That's okay, they're nice and thick too. Okay, I'll take this one. Yeah. She so got any hot coals to whack it up on? Man, yes. Gotcha. Do you want what you want one of these broken eggs? That one's got a hole in it, honey. <laughs> okay. Let her let the lady get them. Looking for some sticky rice, we got our egg. Tade. Sip pan. Sip pan? Okay. Sip pan for four eggs. These lovely ladies couldn't help us enough. <laughs> There is no restaurant here, but they've set us up a table here in the in the market. What a great view! For these friendly people we have. I am. People. Yeah. Because it's common. Oh, oh, loud room. They 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 tell. How long? I never heard. No. How long is? Is that what this lady is? Yep. All these vegetables, are they locally grown? <laughs> Maybe that's it. The villagers and the farmers outside of town grow the money and the people in this village make their money from these markets selling to the, all those villagers. This would be like a hub where, where they come in and get their clothes and tools and farm equipment and things like that. Was, we couldn't get a straight answer off that lady as what they do in this town to make money, you know, their source of income. She just said they just work here. But the money's got to come from somewhere. Uh, the people who grow here in this town are just growing it for themselves. But it is a hub of many villages around in these mountains, up the valleys, and the rice fields and that. They'd be the ones producing, growing the rice and things, and producing the money to spend at these places where these people make money. But have a go at these veggies. How healthy do they look? That's some seriously good looking sweet potato there. Eggplant there. A wide variety of things. A huge range. Look at those. Those peppers. Tomatoes. They've even got a run for run. For run potato. 
little kitchen over there. Now, they're not doing it hard at all here. Now, obviously, it is great growing area. Okay, so I only getting some information. They, they also raise uh, cattle and buffalo and sell to other provinces. Happy we came in here, made the detour off the road. You wouldn't expect to see a town in off a main road like this. Little villages, yeah, little dusty villages. Guaranteed, but this is a town. Nene was just talking to that gentleman and I got her to ask him the question of how the villagers feel about the trucks not just passing through but coming in and taking over their villages using them as truck stops truck parks now some villages had closed it down to a narrow skinny one lane we had to give way to other trucks and cars coming past because of the trucks just parked on the side of the road and he said the villagers aren't happy about it at all they're afraid for the environment they live in um, and not just for the way it's tearing up the roads and the dust and the danger for the local inhabitants but the danger as far as the chemicals that can be leaked from these trucks you know that are coming from the mines yeah they are afraid of that you know the kids up here as i've pointed out over the years it is their front yard the road they play on it it's always been a danger but it's even more so now with these trucks, you know. And the villages that we're passing through, they're just covered in dust because of the way the road has been destroyed by these heavy trucks up here. Imagine breathing in that dust every day. These people are lucky. They've moved off that road. You know, they're still in touch with the local farmers around here. That they're away from those trucks and they're happy for it, you know. That's what this gentleman was saying. The, the people living on the main roads with these trucks, they're, what can they do? They're not happy about it, but there is nothing they can do. They do the road the, and throw out. Yeah, that was, ah, right, okay. Once upon a time, there was many fields of these standing stones. This gentleman was just saying. And when they built the road through here, they just cleared them. They didn't know what they were. You know, it wasn't like they were big jars. They're like big skinny plinths, these things. So a lot of them have been moved and destroyed. Okay, bye there. Bye bye. Shakti. <laughs> We've sat here chilling, talking to these shit people for a while now, gathering some good information. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> to keep you better grab it fast you understand you move through with this girl crying like a fire in the sun <coughs> you should have washed these too <laughs> Okay, so we have found one site. In the district of Mong Pen. What is this hole? Massive hole there. As you can see how close they are to the road. The gentleman back at Hua Mwang, where we're sitting having lunch, Said, there was a lot more of these sites and when they were building this road they just went through and cleared them didn't even stop to think of the significance of them and they predate back older than the plain of jars and you can just see shards broken uh, stones along the side of the road coming up here What a shame, hey? Is that tree growing up out of the centre of these stones which has caused them to fall? These are 
tienes nada. What were they for? Are they all facing in a similar direction? No. Those ones are opposite, 90 degree to it. Like the big um, time traveling stones out of Outlander, hey? Imagine what they were doing up here, all the giggling and laughing. They've been here making some sort of fantasy movie. <laughs> I'm more intrigued about these holes. And you've got big disc like ones on the ground. It's not the first disc one we've seen. There. Some somebody shed some light on it. <laughs> Not much light's going to be shed because I have googled it, and there's more of a mystery behind these stones than there is the jars, and they haven't even solved that mystery. But look at these. Like I knew about the standing stones, but the the laying discs. Didn't know about those. They don't mention anything about them. There's just as many discs on the ground than what there is on standing stones. All over the place. And how many of them are covered? Lost to us because the soil has covered them. Right, uh, let's check out the mystery of the depth, depth of these holes. This is as you can see, I'll be a good three feet taller than what I am, maybe four. Okay, makes me think that it's probably about up to there. A bit over six foot deep, that hole. May it makes me wonder if they've um actually dug some out for monuments. I know there is a few big standing stones as a monument i can't remember if they're real ones or or just man-made ones in some newer highlighting the, st the standing stones in this area whether they're real stones or not but makes you think you know wonder if they've excavated them how deep these things are in the ground for a lot of them to still be standing hey some of them are over. Um, yeah, see how this goes. And about the same. Oh. Yeah, probably just a little deeper. Yeah, these good holes are all about the same, about six foot deep. Like, if you were to fall in one, You'd have fun trying to get out. Not impossible, but for me no it is. I did say coming up here, don't bother. It's because I was pissed at those trucks and the dust and just what they're doing to the place. This is what I'm talking about. to visit a place like this. You're just driving on silk if you're thinking about coming and playing the standing stones a visit. I wouldn't bother. I haven't even been there to see them yet but 
just not worth what we're breathing in and sharing it with these trucks. It is worth coming. It is worth, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, you know, I could just hang here for an hour or more just walking among them. I'm being watched. I see you. How you doing, Mr. Cow? Just contemplating what the holes are from. The discs, what part they play in it. Standing stones. They're not in any sort of pattern. They're not all facing the same way. And just the feeling that you do get up here, you, you have got a good view. Once upon a time, maybe, well, once upon a time, these probably were deep in jungle. Yeah, but what was it like a couple of thousand years ago? How old are the jars? These are older than the jars, so. Who put them here? Makes you wonder why, doesn't it? And it is nice being up here in nature, just contemplating that. I'm gonna throw this one out there, because there's a big patch here, holes. Oh, like a whole cluster of them are gone. I wouldn't be surprised if the biggest ones of them have been taken. Explains why such deep holes also. With some of these smaller ones, yeah, you know, they've started to move and fall over and they wouldn't need to be so deep, but larger ones would. Just a thought. The trees certainly like growing out of these holes, don't they? Let's go, let's go, <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go before this dust gets us. Quick, quick. We beat it. Let's sing. Let's sing Palawak, Mina. Let's Palawak, Mama. Baba Ben. Let's Palawak, my tummy and teeth. Oh, look. Look at this. This talcum powder, this road. Just had to stop for this, guys. To Beatty. What is it, Daniel? What, like a dessert or something, is it? Yeah. Very sticky stuff. Okay. Half time, change sides. Got a, a sub in. Coming in off the bench. What's this one doing? Look how sticky that is. Is it a type of. Um, you remember we eat in Palawe with the local in the morning? Similar to so you eat with the honey. You remember? And what's this? Is this it here? Is it that she's cutting? Yeah. Oh, it's just like pressed rice. Oh, it's just like pressed rice. Oh, it's just Yeah, sticky rice. Is that, is that both? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> she is straining the pull up. Yeah, just hook into it. It's, it's hot. I do remember eating that now. Oh. Oh. 
Mm. <laughs> Mina likes that because she used to eat it at home. I can't get over how sticky that stuff is. Yeah. And a mong knife there. Solid hardwood handle. Even these small ones feel good in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like your hat, do you? That's going to keep you warm tonight. It just keeps going and going, this stuff, doesn't it? Mm. So they just do it for special occasions. Okay, so it's they steam rice. Yeah. And then just bash it. Yeah. But just keep beating it and beating it and it turns into that big chewed up piece of chewing gum consistency sort of stuff. It's mong bread. Mong bread. I do remember eating it. I'm just trying to remember where. Oh, it was across the road, wasn't it? Oh, in Mina. And is is in that Mina, what? Grandma. Across the road, and the, and they were deep frying it also, and you called it uh, rice chips. Yeah. Ah, deep fried was better. Yeah. No taste to it. It's just like rice. You got to add something to it. A nice thin layer of Vegemite on that would be good. Okay. 
noodles and beer. We had a couple of beers in here that Mina's grandmother gave us to take away and they've just sat in the car because not, they're not cold and we just have one of an evening with our meal, nice cold one. They've just been right along with us. She looks like she could do with a beer. She does. Are you noodles tonight? Where the day is lost and the night is found 